Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Thinking in Matter, Level 2, Matter and Matter Transport. You can see in this video we're going to be dealing with a system, so let me get that out of the way. You always want to define the system, especially when we're looking at matter and how matter starts to move around. So this video is about matter. Remember, the object that represents matter is going to be this black cube. Uh, we're going to start learning about this concretely, how matter can be transported from one location to another. But remember, the reason we're doing this is once we understand how matter at the concrete level can move from one area to another, then we can start thinking about things like particles and atoms and how they move around in complex systems. So after watching this video, you should be able to look at matter transport or the movement of matter in objects like this gumball machine or in living objects like a plant as it starts to grow. But I'm gonna start by showing you my thinking as we look at this simple wooden box and then we'll think together as we look at a piggy bank. So let me clean this up and then we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is define the system. In this case, the system is going to be this wooden box. And now we're going to put out some matter that we'll start to study or investigate as that matter is moving in, out, and within the system. So for this part, I just want you to watch carefully what happens. So we're gonna say this is the system, the wooden box is the system. And what I'm gonna do is just start putting things into the system. So these are all now in the system and then we dump it out. Okay, so we had matter that was outside the system, then matter that's inside the system, and then some of that matter has left the system. So let's get out and define our system box. So what we're trying to look at and, and determine is how is the man matter transported as we're looking at within the system. So the first thing I would do is write down a key that's gonna show or explain how matter is transported. So lots of times in these videos that arrow represents a cause, but in this case that arrow is going to represent matter being transported. The next thing I want to do is I want to write down what is the matter that went into the system. So let me do that. So this is matter, we're just going from left to right. Matter that was outside the system were the green cubes and the yellow cubes. Next thing I'm going to write down is what ended up in the system itself. And then finally, I want to write down what's actually leaving the system or what's coming out of the system. Okay, so we have the green cubes. The green cubes went into the system. So what that arrow represents is matter transport outside the system into the system. We also have the yellow cubes that are going into the system. What makes them interesting is they also leave the system. So the yellow cubes are going to leave the system. Now, why do the yellow cubes come out? Well, it's because the green cubes are magnetic. They're magnetic, so they're staying in the system itself, whereas the yellow cubes are not magnetic. And so what I'm really trying to show with this model is I'm showing that the yellow cubes come out of the system, and then those green cubes are going to be within the system itself. Remember, it's really important then that I've defined what the system is. Otherwise, we'd have no reference frame to figure out what's coming into the system and then what's coming out of the system. So that is uh, my first example of uh, matter transport within a system. What I'm going to do is clean it up, and then I'll set up for one for you to do looking at a piggy bank. Okay, for this uh, second example, we're going to start with a piggy bank. A piggy bank has a way to get money out and also has a way to deposit money in the top. And so the first thing we're going to do is define the system. So in this case, the piggy bank is the system. So I'm outside the system and these coins are outside the system as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deposit some money into the piggy bank. So let's start with this quarter. So I'm going to deposit a quarter, and another quarter, and another quarter, and another quarter. I'm then going to deposit four nickels. And then I'm going to deposit four pennies. 
Now in this example, let's say that I want some of that money back. So I've saved most of my money, it doesn't come out, but let's say I need a little bit of money. So let's say that I need a quarter, and so I'm gonna take that quarter out of the system. So now what I'd like to have you do is set up a system where you look at matter transport into, within, and out of the system. I've got some thinking slides below, so you could use those or just a piece of paper to show me what you're thinking. So pause now and then give it a try. Okay, for this one, I would want to define what the system is. So the system, remember, is going to be the piggy bank. The next thing I'm going to do is start to show my thinking. I think it's a good way to start thinking about it, just traveling from left to right, what comes into the system, what comes out of the system. So I'm gonna write the inputs into the system to start. So the three inputs into the system are going to be the four quarters, uh, the four nickels, and then the four pennies. The next thing I'll try start to show is what ends up in the system and then what comes outside the system. Okay, so as we look at matter transport, now we, let me add the arrows now. Remember, the arrows are gonna show where matter moves. So there were four quarters that went into the system of the piggy bank, and then one quarter that went out. Um, there's four nickels that went in, and there's four pennies that went in, but you can see that they didn't leave the system itself. And so when we're looking at matter, and we're really trying to track matter into and out of a system, remember, we're starting with real concrete examples. I've showed you my thinking as we looked at this box and this piggy bank. Now what you could do is do the same thing with a gumball machine, or now dig into the science, where you're going to look at how does matter go into a fast plant, is it coming from the air, the water, or is it coming from the soil? And so you're always gonna set it up the same way. What's the system? What comes into the system? What stays in the system? And then what's going to leave the system? So that's Thinking in Matter, uh, lesson two. That's on matter and matter transport, and I hope that was helpful.